do I need to register my RIA with the SEC or with the state? That is the topic of today's question, which is question number two on the Transition to RIA video series. Hi, I'm Brad Wales with Transition to RIA, where I help advisors just like you learn everything they want to know about the RIA model. Uh, what are the economics of it? What are the pros and cons of it? Why might you consider going RIA versus what your current affiliation option is? Uh, so understanding all of those variables is what I help advisors with. And then to the degree an advisor decides, hey, maybe this is a path that I want to pursue. I then also explain, hey, what are those steps involved with actually transition into the RA? So happy to help have that conversation with you. Uh, head on over to transitiontora.com if you're not already there. All kinds of information uh, and easy contact information of how to get a hold of me for a conversation. So today's question though, do I need to register my RA with the SEC or with the state? Uh, now this is a good question. Uh, it seems like, hey, short, quick answer, uh, but there are some nuances with it that I wanted to go through in this video uh, just so you understand exactly how it works. So the short answer is, uh, do I need to register, again, my, my uh, RA with the state or SEC? The kind of the mark that draws the conclusion on that initially is $100 million. So if you have more than $100 million under management, you would be registered with the SEC. If you have under 100 million under management, you would be registered with your state. Now, interesting enough, that number used to be 30 million was that kind of over underline. Uh, and the SEC, this is a number of years ago, uh, the SEC basically said, no, we're gonna increase that to 100. And effectively what that did is that pushed the oversight of a lot of RIAs down on the state. So if you were, previously say 70 or 80 million and at the time that that was above the 30 that had you at SEC registration when they changed that to 100 uh, that pushed that down to the state so kind of what the differences mean and I'll do a future video on this is basically who's responsible for the oversight of your firm the SEC or your state who would do an examination of your firm those sorts of things um, so it is important to understand hey would I be SEC or would I be state so again, the, the initial look at that is that $100 million point, above $100 million, your SEC below your state. Now, a couple of nuances to go with that. When you set up your new RIA, uh, which is a, a legal entity um, unto itself, and there's a whole process for how you go about setting up an RIA, which is what part of what I explain to advisors and help them understand that process, uh, but on that day, that RA, you know, figuratively goes live from a, from a legal regu regulatory perspective. On day one, your RA technically has zero assets. You have not moved any clients under that RA. Now, you might have, let's say, 300 million in your current firm. Uh, and your goal, of course, at, at this point is, oh, you're, you're establishing your own RA, you're transitioning to the RA model. Uh, and so certainly you have more than the $100 million line. You have $300 million and you, you intend to take uh, you know, as much or all of it as you can with you to the RIA. So clearly you're going to be above the $100 million. But on that day one, you, you, you technically have zero. You haven't moved any assets underneath the RIA. So well, how, how are we supposed to be SEC registered if we have zero assets? And so the regulators certainly uh, understand this scenario. So what they do is they give you 120 days uh, if you're going to be SEC registered from the time you launch the firm to get to that $100 million mark. Now, if you have $300 million, th there's no obligation that says you have to move all 300 by that 120 days. Now, obviously, you have an incentive to do that. Uh, personally, but from a regulatory standpoint, they say within that 120 days, you need to move at least 100 million to that point. So basically, you essentially self-declare ahead of time and say, I, I know I will be SEC. I know I will have more than 100 million. I just need to move the assets. And they give you that 120-day buffer window to get there. Uh, now, if you know you're going to be state all along, so let's say you currently uh, or at least under, you know, maybe, maybe your intention, right, is to grow to the point, and I'll get to that in a second, where one day you, you pass that 100 million mark and you become SEC. But if you have 70 million now, wherever you are located, and, and you want to start your own RA and move that 70 million, uh, you're going to be state regardless. So there is no 120-day window under 
the state registration, because technically you don't need any assets to be registered in the state. You have, you have zero, you get a 5 million, 20 million, whatever. So as you work to move your 70 million over, whether you've moved over 5 million or 30 million or 70 million, you're, you're going to be state registered either way. So you're not, you know, figuratively on the clock as far as moving your assets when you know you're going to be uh, state registered kind of from the start at that point. So that's the initial setup. Now let's fast forward. You've, you've done the transition. You've, you've reached the point in assets you're going to be at. Now what happens over time? And so there's, there's two scenarios, there's two paths you can take here. Uh, we'll take the first one that's, that's generally uh, more seen because someone's growing as opposed to the opposite. You'll see what I mean. But if you start out as state registered, like we just talked about, and let's say you have that 70 million, you know, most advisors want to grow their firm, bring on assets. So the question is, okay, when you reach that 100 million mark, the minute you jump over 100 million, do you now have to register with the SEC or re-register the RA with the SEC? Um, and to be clear, there's a, there's a process for doing that, for moving from state to SEC. Uh, the compliance consultants, I, I talk about this a lot and or will talk about a lot in videos, um, help you with all these details. They help you set up the RA. Um, we'll go over that in a future video. I'm always willing to, to have that conversation if you ever like, if you want to reach out in the interim. Um, but the idea is, okay, you've set up as a state registered. Now what happens as you grow your firm, you've passed the 100 million mark. Well, the challenge there is when, when you get right to 100 million, the, the, the market that day could go up and, and push you above 100 million. And then, and then the next day, the market could go down right and, and push you just right below the 100 million. So what, what is exactly supposed to happen when you cross this line? And so again, the regulators understand that predicament. You know, they don't want people needlessly, you know, moving back and forth. So what happens is you're, as you're on your way up, going from state to SEC, when you cross that 100 million mark, you have the option at that point to re-register with the SEC, uh, the option. When you reach 110 million, you have the requirement to do it. Uh, so at that point, you no longer have an option or, or not. Uh, but again, that's a good problem because that means you're growing uh, and, and hopefully not only passing the 110, but, but well exceeding it long term. So uh, again, just the numbers as you grow to keep in mind. Now, the opposite, and this, this is pretty rare, but if someone starts out as SEC, in theory, they, they could you know, shrink or decrease in size. Now, that's generally rare because if someone is you know, perhaps reaching a point in their career where they're, they're kind of winding the practice down or they're, they're, they're going to enter into some sort of succession or sale process, um, that's generally what happens in the assets are kind of maintained. Generally, you don't see advisors just Kind of slowly bleeding out assets and losing clients and just slowly whittling down the book. Um, but in, in theory, that could happen. So if you were SEC registered, the way it works is when you drop below that 100, again, you have the option at that point to move down to state. Uh, and then when you reach 90 million, if you do fall below 90 million, you are then obligated to re-register with the state at that point. Again, you don't really see that uh, too much SEC to state. Uh, but you definitely see people uh, that start out as state and eventually uh, achieve SEC status. Uh, the only other uh, kind of variable I'd point out, again, don't see too much of this, but it's worth pointing out. Uh, the only other kind of carve out is if you are state registered RIA and you have clients in more than 15 states or a physical presence of your business in 15 or more states, which would be tremendously rare that, that any RIA would have a physical footprint in 15 or more states and not be at 100 million and, and above and already be SEC. So it's more likely you, you, would, you would achieve this at the client level. So if you are state registered because of your asset level, but you have clients in 15 or more states, the SEC says, okay, considering your broad reach, you can go ahead and register at the SEC level as well. So kind of unique scenario, worth pointing out nonetheless, because uh, it does exist as, a, as a, an option, if you will. Uh, and then the last thing I'd say, I, I kind of mentioned this, don't feel overwhelmed by any of this. Uh, this is what compliance consultants do for you. And, and again, I'll do a video on this, but part of running your RA is being responsible for your compliance. No RA tries to do that on their own. You work with experienced compliance consultant firms that this is what they do. 
Uh, and so you engage with them and, and this is easy stuff for them to take care of. They, they understand all these numbers, they understand the filings, they understand when you might be at some point, they will notify you of all that. You won't have to remember or be, be uh, you know, effectively responsible for, oh I, oh, I need to do this. They, they will bring that to your attention. So uh, don't, don't fret the details, but it is worth just understanding why some one RA might be SEC, why one RA might be state, and you can kind of mentally think through what would that mean for your practice considering your current size. So with that, like I said, I'm Brad Wales with Transition to RIA. This is exactly what I do for advisors. I help advisors understand everything they want to know about the RIA model. Uh, everything from what are the benefits, what are the pros and cons, how do the economics work, what are the responsibilities, why might I do this, what are the options with how to do it, uh, and then if you, if you do feel it's a good fit for you, what are the steps with that actual transition process? So I help advisors with all of that. Uh, so jump on over to transitiontora.com if you're not already watching this on there. Uh, you can see all of my resources. I would love to have a conversation with you to see if I can help you. Just look for the contact link at the top of the page. You can instantly schedule a Zoom call with me uh, with no problem at all. And we can certainly have this sort of dialogue to go over any questions you might have. Uh, but for the time being, I hope you found this helpful and uh, I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video.